Hi everyone, I'm Jim White. I recently uh, stumbled on a way of demonstrating the Bernoulli effect and it had to do with uh, a process for printmaking. These are some prints that I've been working on. Uh, these look like monotypes, but actually uh, there's ways of making multiple copies of a uh, print from the same plate. And uh, let me grab a plate here. This is a sheet of acrylic material uh, that is used as the plate for this type of printmaking. And while washing ink off of these plates, a uh, way of demonstrating the Bernoulli effect uh, appeared. And I will show you that shortly. For those uh, interested in uh, printmaking, I'll show you a few more examples of, the, of prints that I've made. This is a typical monotype where the very first print uh, destroys the plate. So only, only one copy can be made. Now here is uh, an issue of two prints that were made from the same plate. Now here is an example of four, pl four prints that were made from the same plate. Here's an example of two prints that were made from the same plate. Here's an, another example of four prints, but you'll see that one of them is degraded enough to be significantly different than the others. There's the fourth print and the first. Okay, after I uh, demonstrate the Bernoulli effect, I'll also show you a demonstration of the Coanda effect, uh, which I discovered by accident several years ago. So let's start with uh, Bernoulli. Let's go out to the hydrodynamics laboratory. Okay, here is our hydrodynamics laboratory. Some people call it a sink. And the first thing we need to do is to measure the force of the water coming from the spigot. And we'll do that using this balance beam here. Uh, the water will impinge on the end of this and then I'll use a, a weight which I'll move back and forth to try and roughly gauge the force of the water stream on this end. Now this is a hair out of balance but there's a number eight washer and not even at the end, it pulls it back. Here's our uh, balance beam uh, sitting in the sink. And let's uh, find the point where the water can lift the weight. Okay, right there, it's lifting the weight. And... I hope you can see it, that the water is lifting the weight at that point. Okay, let's uh, 
weigh our weight here. I've always said a clean workbench is a sign of not much going on. Okay, it looks like uh, 332 grams. Now you might laugh at my scale here. If you have one of those electronic digital scales, it's going to be useless after the EMP. Now, We had 332, so let's, and a, an arm ratio of 2 to 1. So we'll put the cursor on 332. Now you know where the term cursor comes from. And we're going to divide by 2. And that's 166 grams. Now, after the EMP, this will still work, but this won't, nor will this. So, don't be scared, be prepared. I really like strawberries on ice cream. Here's a piece of acrylic that I have uh, sandblasted basically to make it easier to see. Let's put some water in the sink here. And let's see if the acrylic floats or sinks. Let's get the bubbles out from under it. And I hope you can see that it is laying on the bottom. There's water on the top here. And now we're going to run water down onto the top of the acrylic. you can see that it has floated to the top. I'll turn the water off. And the acrylic sinks. Now it's got air under it. So let's do that again. Okay, you can see it coming up to the top, by the way the uh, water is splashing, and if we turn it off, it should sink again. There is a little bit of air under it. So let's try this with a piece of metal and uh, see if it still works. Okay, here's a piece of aluminum and uh, it's hard to see the water but it is under water and the purpose of those brackets is to uh, keep it from sliding towards us due to the angle of the water. Let's give this a try. And I think you can see the metal came up to the top at least the end where the water is hitting it. And there it has sunk to the bottom. I'm going to move it down a little further. 
There, I think you can see that it has floated to the top. And there, it ran off to the side. And it's sunk to the bottom of the sink. Now, all that's in, in spite of the downward force from the water, which is, uh, we measured as 166 grams, which is about uh, 0.37 pounds or 5.8 ounces. So the metal has to come up uh, counteracting its own weight plus the downward force of the water. So I think that's a pretty good demonstration of the Bernoulli effect. Here's a little device that I put together just to, so to visualize airflow. Now if I make the air go along a flat surface, uh, you'd expect to be airflow out here, but not down here. And that's pretty much what we see. Now this is a sharp edge here, and uh, the Coanda effect uh, does not work uh, where an edge is sharp, as we see here. Now this workbench has a bend radius here. It's rather small. I'd say the radius is perhaps an eighth of an inch. And let's see what happens here. What uh, we witnessed there is there was almost no airflow straight out. Somehow this radius was bending the air down and we could see a violent airflow down here. So this curved surface has made the air go right around it. That's the Kowanda effect and the air was shooting down instead of horizontal. Well, there you have a demonstration of the Bernoulli principle and the Coanda effect. Uh, if you got anything out of the video, how about a thumbs up and maybe uh, subscribing to the channel. Thank you.